This video reviews a sample philosophy essay. The author's essay begins with an informative title that gives the reader an idea of what the essay is about and what the student will argue in what follows. Don't just title your paper Essay 1. That's not informative. Creativity and humor are welcome, but don't select a title that is so obscure that it leaves the reader scratching her head in confusion. The first paragraph of the author's essay is the introduction. Think of your introduction as a bridge that transports readers from their own lives to the topic of your essay. There is more than one way to do this, but in the introductory paragraph of this student's essay, she begins with a question that draws the reader in. She also uses this question as the springboard for her thesis statement. The student will argue that punishment is not morally justified if we don't have free will. Notice that her thesis can be stated in two sentences, and it's at the very beginning of her essay. This is perfect. In the second paragraph, the author provides important background information about the topic of her paper. She defines punishment and explains the relationship between punishment, free will, and moral responsibility. It is the background information which enables the author to state a key argument in support of her thesis. She argues that if we do not have free will, then we are not morally responsible for our actions. And if we are not morally responsible for our actions, then punishment is not justified because it is unfair. In the third paragraph of her essay, the author does something important that I want you to notice. In this paragraph, she clearly states not only what she is going to argue, but how she is going to do it. In other words, she explains the structure of her argument to the reader clearly and succinctly. By clearly explaining the structure of her argument, the reader is better prepared to understand the subsequent paragraphs of her essay, how they are related to each other, and how they are related to her thesis. This is very well done. The structure of the author's argument is an argument from elimination. An argument from elimination seeks to rule out various options until only a single option remains, namely the author's thesis. In this case, the thesis that punishment is not morally justified if we don't have free will. In paragraphs 4, 5, and 6, the author considers three different theories of punishment and presents objections to each theory. Notice how each theory of punishment, retributivism, the moral education theory, and the utilitarian deterrence theory, each gets its own paragraph. If the author had tried to discuss all three theories of punishment in a single paragraph, that paragraph would have more than one main idea. By separating her discussion of each theory of punishment into its own paragraph, the author ensures that each paragraph has only one main idea and that the ideas each contains are explained in enough depth and detail. In the final paragraph of her essay, the author anticipates an objection to her thesis. In all strong argumentative essays, the author considers at least one objection to her thesis and responds to it. In this essay, the author imagines how someone who disagrees with her might respond to her argument. The objection she considers is that without punishment, there would be no order or civility in society. The author responds to this objection by explaining that there are morally justified alternatives to punishment, which accomplish the same ends. She mentions that rehabilitative programs can prevent criminal behavior and help people to abide by the moral and legal rules of society. Rehabilitation, she argues, can protect members of society, but still treats wrongdoers with dignity. Finally, notice that this student's essay doesn't really have a concluding paragraph. That can be okay, but writing a conclusion is a good opportunity for you to have the final say on the arguments that you have raised in your essay. It allows you to synthesize your thoughts and to demonstrate the importance of your ideas. As the Writing Center at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill puts it, the conclusion pushes beyond the boundaries of the prompt and allows you to consider broader issues, make new connections, and elaborate on the significance of your findings. Your conclusion should make your readers glad that they read your paper. Your conclusion gives your reader something to take away that will help them to see things differently or appreciate your topic in personally relevant ways. 
It can suggest broader implications that will not only interest your reader, but can also enrich your reader's life in some way. It is a gift to your reader. Thank you.